If there's one political leader in the UK who I believe should be hoping the Omicron variant leads to further COVID-19 chaos, carnage and, yes, lockdowns, it's Nicola Sturgeon. But in my opinion, the past 48 hours shows why the Scottish First Minister is a political opportunist rather than a serious contender to lead Scotland. And smart Scots, both unionists fed up with her constant divisive separatist uh, rhetoric and Nats sick of her loud talk and lack of action, are finally seeing through scheming Sturgeon. The game is up. And I predict, despite her denials, it won't be long before she starts to negotiate some cushy job with her liberal mates at the UN or World Health Organization. It's so obvious that's what her heart really desires, now that she surely knows becoming the Queen of Scots is a delusional fantasy. Sturgeon must realise independence is no longer a pressing priority for Scottish people who want her failed SNP government to sort out its desperate health system, collapsing ambulance service, spiralling drugs crisis and under pressure education service. I don't believe in individual polls, but the trend has become overwhelming of late. There's no majority for Scottish independence, not even close. Take last week's YouGov poll for The Times, which said that independence from the UK was eighth in the list of Scottish voters' concerns. Yet Sturgeon still bangs on. Because she knows she has, has to, even though there's zero chance of a serious second referendum being granted, given the SNP's cast-iron promise the last vote was a once-in-a-generation opportunity. Here she was yesterday at the SNP conference held virtually because Sturgeon weirdly wants to draw as little attention to it as possible. I defy anyone to look at the broken, corrupt, self-serving Westminster system that we are currently part of and conclude that it provides a secure basis for the future of Scotland. So I would not be discharging my duty to the people of Scotland if I did not seek to keep the promise on which we were elected, to offer the people of Scotland the choice of a better future through independence. Next year, Covid permitting, as we emerge from winter into spring, the campaign to persuade a majority of people in Scotland that our future will be more secure as an independent nation will resume in earnest. In the course of next year, I will initiate the process necessary to enable a referendum before the end of 2023. Covid permitting, they are the key words, because I think Sturgeon knows there's a benefit to her in this crisis dragging on. And the Sturgeon we saw most comfortable yesterday was not at the SNP conference, but rather the authoritarian COVID leader at the official governing podium, opining over the control she wants over her people. She reacted with trademark hysteria to the Omicron variant, insisting the Westminster government hadn't gone far enough and that they should immediately fund a new furlough scheme for Scotland. There were demands for Scots to keep working from home, to stay muzzled and to be forced to self-isolate for at least 10 days after daring to go on holiday. They're asking people, everybody across the country, to significantly step up and increase compliance with all existing precautions. Face coverings, hygiene like washing hands and surfaces, getting vaccinated and, of course, testing yourselves regularly. We're also reminding people to work from home if possible. I'm asking employers to ensure that they are maximising the potential of home working. Anybody travelling back to Scotland from those 10 countries must enter a managed quarantine for 10 days on their arrival. Book a booster uh, for when you are due it. And if you haven't yet had your first or second doses, please book an appointment to get them now. But I hate to break it to Sturge. COVID is becoming endemic. There's only so long you can weaponize the fear of a virus against your people. And there's only so long you can use COVID to delay your promise 2023 in the referendum part two, which you won't win and won't be officially sanctioned even if you go ahead with your nonsensical plan to hold a vote anyway. I repeat, the game is up.